So if you want to really be different, you got to learn how to paint pictures, tell stories, sell situations, and sell ideas. If anybody's watching this right now, the secret in life, this is the secret to me. And I know this is your secret too, so I'll give it. You cannot stop me, I'ma make it to the top spot, see, caught a cup of your top cocky, you cannot break me, this world's mine for the taking, got a niche man I'm making, oh. So the cool thing is, is that, you know, how you know if you find a good leader is if they're doing what you're teaching, mm. right? Yeah. I mean, that's a good leader and that's, and that's worthy of following somebody when they do what they say they're gonna do because most people are just running their mouth nowadays and nobody's really doing it. Look, dude, a lot of people could have a hundred million dollars, they could have a private jet, but nobody cares. Yeah. Like, honestly, like nobody cares, dude. Honestly, at the end of the day, nobody even cares if you make money or what. They believe in what you believe in mm -hmm. and that's your brand. And I'm telling you, there's a lot of people that think building a brand is going and watching other people's social media and then going to their channel and regurgitating what they're saying. And that's why they're not growing. And that's why I'll tell you, like Brad said, dude, you're the content. He's like, look, what are your beliefs? I was like, dude, I love people and I believe everybody's qualified for a good life. He goes, lean into that shit, get passionate and go hard. Mm -hmm. And when they start hating, lean into it more, put more gas on the fire and go hard. Like everybody's got something to say that isn't doing something. But anyway, so, um, you know, it's like uh, when Brad said, hey, this guy's gonna blow up, you know, Brad just said, Andy, like, dude, I see that you're not afraid. And like, if you look, some of these guys, he talked about you. He's like, Ryan, don't give a shit what people think about his hair. <laughs> Nobody usually yeah. is an example. Yeah. He goes, he don't care. Matter of fact, he changes the colors just to piss them off, <laughs> okay? He's like, but, but he's, he's him, and that's why people love him. Yeah. He's like, he's real. And that's, I'm um, real, real Bradley. Yep. He's like, so, you know, you just be real, like, and that's your brand. And he goes, and by the way, the brand is going to carry more weight and get you into more rooms than money. It will. 1, yeah. Percent. He goes, so like, just, just be yourself, be real. The people that are like you, they're going to find you. The people that, you know, can feel your spirit and that you're real. Because it's a spirit. In order to inspire somebody, you got to carry a spirit in you. Yeah. But anyways, but yeah, we have blown up and it's because I took the advice that you gave me, Brad gave me, the greats said just create a brand. And a lot of people, they think that they're building their brand because they have a logo, they have a name, but they're not real. Yeah. And people know that they're not real. Yeah. And their teams don't emulate them. That's the secret power. Um, a lot of people, they can't find their own identity. And by the way, your identity develops and evolves every day. Yeah. If you really aspire, to change people's lives, I mean, and really aspire to be a leader, you're going to have to change every day. Yep. Every time we meet, you're different. Your eyes look different. Mm. Do when you change, your eyes change colors. Mm. I can see in people's souls, and I can tell whether they're growing or they're dying. And so can you. Yeah. You can say hi to anybody when you walk by, and you can tell whether they love life and they have progress in it, or you can tell whether they're stuck and they're stagnant. You can tell whether they've been training and they're sharp. You can tell whether they're shaking people's hands and walking around and pouring love into people, or you can tell that they got that look on their face, what's in it for me? Mm. And this is transactional. You can tell really who's by your side. You can tell who really texts you and is checking in on you to see how you're doing. You can tell when somebody calls you, whether it's a chess game yep. and there's something coming on in the future. If everybody would just become real, they would have everything they want and more and everybody would be taken care of. Think about this, how many people just show up, consume content, they take in information, but then they don't change. They get a couple small wins through the year. You have a couple students right now, somebody watching this, like who's, who's your greatest student? Mm -hmm. Whoever they are, they'll call their shot. Yeah. They'll say, Ryan, I'm gonna be your greatest student. And guess what, those are the same people that keep showing up to events. Yeah. They always want you to know that they see your face, why? Maybe there's an opportunity with you and them down the road. Dude, me and Brad have opened up so many opportunities together. Never planned, never planned. That's the cool thing. If I was like with your student, like I would be like, dude, I would be in front of your face all the time. I would be making sure that you're aware of what I'm doing by doing it, not by telling you I'm doing it, but by doing it so it inspires you that when the teacher gets inspired, then the teacher's like, man, maybe we need to be more now. Yeah. Maybe we need to do something together. Yep. You know, every day you're looking for the next person to work for you. And we talked about this on the last podcast. Yep. I'm still looking for my army. Yep. I have about 100 people. Last time we were together, I was about 15 people. Now I'm at 100 people. We call it Elliot Army. Mm -hmm. And dude, it's like, we're, we're all wanting to grow. We're all wanting to build. We need more people that are like us. So we're just waiting on some people to step up. But the brand, it holds more weight to me than anybody with any amount of money. So, so the jerk in the room with all the money that's all stuck up in his private jet who thinks he's cool, he's out. <laughs> like yeah, seriously, 
Yeah, and it's and they call, oh, well, I don't want to be a YouTuber. It's called a brand. Hey, guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254, 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. We're coachable, just like you. If anybody's watching this right now, the secret in life, this is the secret to me. And I know this is your secret too, so I'll give it. You self-develop so fast. Mm -hmm. You self-develop every day. Yep. Most people, they wanna make just enough money to pay their house off, to pay their bills, to get the car they want. And once they get it, they'll get enough stories to tell, they'll read enough books, they'll take enough courses to get them to where they wanna be. I call that a standard. Mm -hmm. And then they slow down. I'm never gonna slow down. And neither are you. You know why? Because it's disrespectful to the people who look up to us. A coach never stops learning. And pro once you stop progress in your life, like you die. Yeah. Like, dude, imagine this. Me, my, my wife always says, if you treat something like it's the beginning, there'll never be an end. Yeah. Right? Like a marriage. Yeah. You know, I'm just saying, like, once you're done making it new, once you're done keeping it fresh, once you're done making it fun, like, it's done. Yeah. Your marriage is always You burn out. You don't retire from your marriage. <laughs> Yeah, but the deal is, is that so many people, the reason why they don't have what they want anymore is because at one point they did have it, it was exciting, they don't have any variety anymore, which is what I call progress, continuing to study whatever it is that you know is important to you, and then it just becomes uh, civilized. Think about this, right? Like when you leave the gym, like your goal is to obviously look different, right? Yeah. But even if you don't achieve that goal, like how do you feel? Feel great. Yeah. See, I'm in the sales space. So sales and leadership, I say two things. If you have sales and you have leadership, you can dominate the world. Mm. Those are the two missing things. And if you have sales and you don't have leadership, to me, you're screwed. So we're about making leaders. So me and Jacqueline, our goal, and that's my wife, me and Jacqueline's goal is I wanna be a power couple for people, because I am older. And I think everybody in this world is built for communion, mm -hmm. including yourself. So like, if you look up to somebody, if they don't have a wife, then it just becomes some guy that you look up to that has some skill. But if he's got a wife, and he takes good care of her, and she's everywhere with him. You're like, damn, man, I really like this guy. Yeah. Like, you'll like him more, and your wife will want you to like him because he respects his wife. And also, dude, our children, when we're close, like, they want to look up to us. My wife, when she was a mom, I'm not talking businesswoman here, CEO, run it. my wife runs the LA group. She's a CEO, she's a killer. When she was just mom, our kids looked at her like a slave. They did because she did everything for them. Once she got into business and me and her started getting in shape, dude, they started looking up to her like, see, she's freaking superwoman. Mm. You know, it's like, it's like, dude, like being our kids heroes, like what do superheroes look like? So my goal is I lead a team. Um, I know this. I'm in competition with a lot of other leaders in this world. I'm in competition with a lot of other influencers in this world. I'm in competition with social media and my team. So I want my team to look at me daily and go, damn, man, that guy's inspiring. Mm -hmm. So what was I missing? I got money. I got cars. I'm good to my team. I show them massive love. I'm good to my wife. I'm great to my children. I take my team to church every Sunday. I'm like, man, dude, I'm like physical, mental business. When we're physically fit, we mentally break records instead of breaking mentally and we crush it in business. I'm like, we gotta get fit. Like a lot of people watching this, they wanna get fit too, just like I did. And a lot of people go to the gym, but they don't change. Mm. And dude, if we studied business every day, but we never made any more money and our teams never grew, we would eventually get pissed off too. And at the end of the day, like what's, what's your goal? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna ask a question, right? Okay, you've got children, yeah. right? So anybody watching this right now, we're talking about what it does for business. What does it do for our kids when the parents stay in shape? I mean, I'm just gonna ask a question, future reference. Do you want your kids to have heart disease when they grow up? Mm. Do you want your kids to have diseases that they get from eating crappy food, from being obese, from being over? Do you want your kids to be a part of that? Yes or no? If the answer is no, then dude, you have to lead the way for your children. Yeah. Okay, like I think so many people like, remember this, there's, and, and let's say another one too. Ryan, you take on an, a, a, a big amount of stress. Mm -hmm. And you may say, I'm stress free. free. You take on projects like nothing else. You probably stack on way too many projects, way too often, all that, you know why? Because you love solving problems and you love the grind. What do you think that does to your heart when you put all these things on? You gotta have a healthy freaking heart. Yeah. So if you're gonna do big stuff, 
you're going to have to be internally healthy. Hey, the six pack and the great body and all that stuff. Like, man, that's just like icing. Yeah. yeah, that's like icing on the cake. The cake is the good heart. The cake is not getting dementia when we get older. Yeah. The cake is being, you know, freaking is feeding our stuff good, good stuff so our brain's operating right. And then the cake is when I die, I want my kids to see, I, cause we're not gonna give our kids money. We'll give them money, but we're gonna give them habits. Mm. I want my kids to get generational habits. The wealthy way, give your kids what you, they need to see in you. Your kids can't have what you don't have. Right. Okay, like, so again, like you're in great shape. You take care of yourself. I want my kids to be healthy. And by the way, that's just called not being one dimensional. Mm. And as I learn, look, we all have teachers. My wife's taught me a couple things. Number one, be where your feet are. It means if you're gonna kick ass at work, go kick ass at work. But when you come home, now you're at home. You're walking into a new environment, right? Yep. So like, you gotta be there with your family, right? They've been waiting on you all day, yep. okay? We're gonna give them leftovers. We're gonna go home, put on a show worth paying for for them too, mm. right? And then also, um, you know, like one dimensional again. People have, we've had leaders. They say, well, you can't, you know, you, you can't have a great marriage and make a lot of money. You gotta choose one or the other. Dude, you can have a great marriage. Yeah. Also, you can be in great shape. I know a lot of people that are like, hey man, I'm gonna get really healthy and then I'm gonna get on the yacht when I get older and work, or I'm gonna make a lot of money, then I'm gonna get healthy. No, you're not. No, no. And, and matter of fact, I'm watching a lot of people right now die at 40 and 50 years old yeah. that are in entrepreneurship yep. and they're dying with a heart attack, they're dying with stroke. Dude, listen, if you don't take care of yourself, all you're doing is gonna make all this money and someone else is gonna raise your family after you're gone. Ooh. So my goal is we're fighting for people's attention right now and you got freaking people that are going home, they're sitting on the couch. I think we tell them, dude, listen, you get off that couch, you start busting your ass, you get in good shape. I promise you the wealth that you're really wanting I bet it can happen in this next year and you don't have to wait. Why wouldn't we compress time frames and get healthy? But, I, but I'll tell you why also we're blown up is because most people are really settling once they make just enough. The only way to coast is down. Our goal is that Ryan, if you feel like financially you ever fulfill your dreams, if you don't find something else to find progress in, you're going to go backwards. Yeah. And that mag magical, magnetic man, that person that everybody looked up to, he'll slowly disappear and everybody else will find someone else. I don't wanna go out like that, man. Yeah. You know, like you said, God gave us one life. I'm gonna go hard. Um, also, renewing your mindset. When you watch podcasts like this, like your goal is to steal the way that people think. Like when I'm with you, I literally just listen and I listen to the way you think and my goal is to steal the way that you think because mm. I need that. My brain, I have, my heart is great, but my brain, I need to figure out different ways to think and you think differently than me. Brad Lee thinks differently than me. Yeah. Keaton thinks differently than me. Ed Milet thinks differently. Andy Frizzella, th I, I want to learn how everybody thinks so I can also take that. Your brain is made for so much, man. And I really think this last year that that's what I've done is that I haven't envied anybody. I've emulated things that make a big difference. Yeah. Self-development, man. Self-development. I'm telling you, dude, it's self-development. I swear on my life. Like, yeah. that's the game. Whoever's going to play the game of self-development is going to kick everybody's how many people do you know self-develop with you, but they don't execute? Yeah, you're out. Yeah. But if you self-develop and you execute, you will crush everybody. Dude, and by the way, I'm gonna say this, it's, the, it's, the, it's amateur hour mm. all around the world. Dude, listen, if you'll out-carry your competition and if you'll train, you'll smoke everybody. Yeah. I mean, it's amateur hour. Yeah. Dude, if you listen to the way that people answer phone calls in a business, if you look at the way that people don't do follow-up anymore, if you look at the way that people just don't care anymore. They do what they're paid to do and nothing more. And by the way, that's the leader's fault. Dude, so what we do, Ryan, let's say that, let's say that I was going to coach you, right? So anybody listening to this right now, like you could grab a pen, piece of paper and write down a couple things. Number one, I want you to write down the word image. Yeah. I want you to understand that you need to understand that your image plays a big part of sales. Mm -hmm. If you're face to face sales, if you don't look like somebody, I said, look, if you don't look like somebody that I'd want to invest my money in, I'm not going to invest my money in you. Right. If you don't look like somebody that I want to spend my money with, I'm not going to spend my money with you. If I walked in, I had a million dollars to invest today and I walked in and I looked at you and I didn't even hear you yet, but I looked at you and I didn't believe in you by the look at you, I'm out. Right. Okay. But people need to wake up and realize that people have eyeballs right. and they are judging you before you even open your mouth. Mm -hmm. Okay. How many people do you see looking sloppy nowadays? Yep. 
way too many. So, so number one, write down image because you need to have an image coach, okay? Which is why I care about fitness, all right? You know, I'd rather hate me and get better than like me and stay the same. Right. You know, you've heard Goggins say that a million times. Mm-hmm. So um, he tells people the truth, right? Yeah. Um, but anyway, so, so, but image though, image is everything. Also speaking, Ryan, think about this. How many people do you shake hands with all the time? And they're like, oh my God, Ryan. And when you talk to them, they don't know how to communicate to you. Right. Again, image speaking everybody's a public speaker whether you speak to one person or ten thousand people people got i want to hear you speak so i think that if you're in any business i think that you need to learn how to use wordplay i think that it's all about presentation the way you present it is the way people perceive it i think that the you the way you use your words you could literally change up a sentence two or three different ways and it could allow somebody to move forward and advance forward or back up okay i believe that as a as a Communicate. We're going to call it a master communicator. Okay, being a speaker, yeah. your job is to make it easy to say yes to, hard to say no to, and make it the client's idea every single time. Dude, also I want to say something. If you're in the real estate space, do you sound like every freaking other real estate person out there? I mean, do you sound the same? Like, why should I even use you if you're all the same? So if you want to really be different, you got to learn how to paint pictures, tell stories, sell situations and sell ideas. And by the way, the word standard, we should just, people don't always get their goals, but they always get their standards. The word standard is probably the most important thing here. Whatever your standard is, is what you'll get. So if you, we teach people image, we teach them communication and speaking, and then we teach them sales. To me, sales is a simple five by five program. It's this. So if I'm in sales, if it's the interest rate, objection, like in real estate, people are saying the interest rate's too high, right? Cool, so it'd be like, hey, Ryan, I totally understand the rate's a little high. However, you know, six to nine months ago, if you were to look at the same property, you would have been in a bidding war with somebody else and probably spent an additional $300,000. Does that make sense? Now, you would have had to put an additional $300,000 down when you bought the house because the loan to value would have probably been the same except for now it's a bidding war. Does that make sense? And you wouldn't want to do that, would you? However, today, there's never been a better time in the history of the world for a consumer like yourself to make a deal on a property like this to buy it right. But the interest rate's a little higher today. Ryan, you date the rate, you marry the payoff. You know what that means? You date the rate when the feds lower them, you get a better one, you refinance it, abracadabra. But guess what? Had you bought a house eight months ago, you would have had a higher payoff. Dude, it would have been a 300 grand higher payoff with the little better interest rate. What would have made you more happy, Ryan? Paying 300 grand for the house with a little better of a rate or having a lower payoff today but having to pay a little higher rate that you can refinance when the feds drop the rate, which they could do any day now? Which one would you rather do? Date the rate, marry the payoff. Sign here, let's roll, buddy. Like, what does your language sound like? And by the way, do I look like I'm thinking about what to say as I'm talking to you? No. no. You're not even a real estate guy. No, because we're snipers. Yeah. We, look, Ryan, if I had a piece of paper right now and I said, write down the top five objections that every real estate person gets, yep. they know what they are. Mm-hmm. Dude, if, if, if somebody walked up to you right now, Ryan, think about this. If somebody walked up to anybody, and walked up to them and literally slapped them across the face. Dude, that would be like, what? that's a shocker. You're like, yeah. what the hell? What if they walked up to you again? You'd be like, dude, there's no way in hell I'm gonna let this guy slap me again. Yeah. I see sales reps get hit every single day with the same objections and they never learn how to handle them. You just keep folding. You just keep getting slapped. <laughs> it's like, they just keep getting slapped. Why? To me, We haven't set the standard high enough. We don't train on it. A lot of people, they underestimate the amount of training that it's gonna make to become wealthy. Yeah. Like truthfully, like dude, listen, whoever's willing to put the work in, who's ever willing, you know what I would tell anybody to do? You wanna really make it? Take the next year, go home, pull your TV down. Mm. Go pull it off the wall, replace them with whiteboards. Mm. Get a vision board. I want you to write down everything that's important to you in your life and I want you to find a picture of it, I want you to put it on the board. And it's almost like going into enemy territory and going to war, right? You ever seen how they go in there and there's yarn everywhere and they're, I want you to start taking out one thing at a time and use all your sacrifice, use all your discipline, you know, use everything. The difference between poor people and rich people are resourcefulness. Rich people are very resourceful. If you want to get something done, you're going to figure out how to get it done. Poor people, they just don't figure it out. And the reason why is because they don't use resources. Hey guys, I just want to tell you you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.